Hello again, I am Jim Bob. Welcome back to Big Bud Farm. You can see I'm just pulling into the store here, and that's because we're going to go shopping again. So, at the end of the last episode, you'll remember that we uh, finished harvesting our canola on field one. And even though we don't need to plow that field, as you can see, uh, it's still clean, we will need to plow it at the end of the next harvest. So we're just going to go ahead and plow it now, because both fields three and five, which we'll be harvesting today, uh, do need to be ploughed after this particular harvest. So I figured I'd get them all synced up onto the same sort of rotation. So uh, uh, we'll plough this in the background while we're working away on fields three and five, and then when that's done, we'll bring the plough over and we'll get these two fields done as well. So we need to get some money, first of all, because we don't have enough to buy the uh, the plough. So we're going to need around about uh, 150 50,000 or so. So let's borrow some money from our loan. That should be enough. There we go. Uh, and now let's go into the store and we're going to buy ourselves a brand new Gregoire Besson plow. So here we go. We need the trail lifter because we're going to be using this with our 747. So we need to buy one of those. And we also need the SPSL9 as well. So we're going to buy it with the finger body shares. And there we go, we've got about $3,000 left. So let's uh, head over to our pickup truck. Let's connect the equipment up. And hopefully this will have enough power in it to be able to actually pull that over to field one, ready and waiting for us. There is our child lifter. Obviously, we wouldn't need to use this if we were using something uh, with a three-point harness, but uh, we don't have anything with a three-point harness that has enough power to pull this combine. Uh, sorry, this uh, this plow. So, hence the child lifter. And we're a little bit heavy on the rear axle, but we should be okay as long as we take it easy enough. So let's get this down to the bottom of field five. Uh, sorry, field one, ready and set up, and then bring our big bud over. So as we pull into this sort of depot area over here, you can see that we already started to store our mother bins here because we only really use them on field one right now. And so we're actually going to start using this as a uh, as a secondary farm location. So we're actually going to probably transfer uh, transfer our 747 down to here and leave it stored down here. What I'm also going to do is uh, install a silo down here as well now that we have that mod. Oops, that's the wrong, disconnected the wrong thing. There we go. Now that we have the mod from Black Sheep, I'm actually going to put in a, uh, a grain silo somewhere over here as well. And I'm thinking that is going to be the perfect spot for it. Uh, one thing I'm also considering doing is installing uh, one of the new placeable mill mods that we had go live at the weekend as well. Uh, where is the placeable mill? There's our silo, 25,000 needed for that. Uh, where is the mill? There's the mill, and that's 52,000. That's going to take up 12 slots. Yeah, let's do that as well. So uh, let's withdraw some extra cash. We have enough available, and uh, we'll look to put both of those onto our onto our farm. So uh, let's start with the mill first of all. Add in a uh, a new sell point for us. So we can sell grains here. We can't sell straw or grass or anything like that, but we can sell grains. So let's just take a look at how big this thing is, and where it needs to go. See, you know, over here could be an interesting possible location. Just here, perhaps, coming off. I still think that is the best location for our silos. Uh, where could we actually put this that would make sense? We could, theoretically, I suppose, put our mill here like that and then have the ramp 
go through into the first of the storage sheds. So that's one possible location we could actually put this thing in. Kind of curious it's letting me actually place it there. It means we may end up having to reset our vehicle if we do drop it just there. Uh, I'll have a think about that. Actually, let's have a look over here as well. We have a little bit of extra space over here, so we could actually we could put silos there, couldn't we? So let's have a look at over here. Wherever I place this, it needs to have decent sort of driving access. And that could possibly do it. Yeah, let's put our mill just here. So let's get this positioned. I think there should do it. And there we go. We have our mill. I wonder what the prices are going to be like at this place. And you can see the water's actually moving. That's kind of cool. It's a shame the wheel doesn't spin. But it's great to see that the uh, there is actually moving water in this section here. Obviously we can't go inside, but uh, so I don't think we can. Nope, those doors don't work. I didn't think they did. Uh, do we have anything we can interact with here? No. We have our little cell, ourselves a little cell point down here. Let's see, does that actually pop up now in our menu? Uh, no, it doesn't. So we're going to have to kind of figure out the prices by hand uh, and see how well they actually do for us. Uh, but now we need to put our silo in. This will give us 210,000 litres of storage, so we're probably going to put two in. Uh, we'll see how much space one takes up. But here it is the uh, the grain storage silo. Can we actually get two in here? Yeah, I think we probably can, can't we? So we plonk that one just there, like so. Actually, let's, uh, before we do that, so we can keep them kind of square, let's take out an extra 5,000 so we can get a second one. There we go. And then we can just scroll across and drop the second one in and keep them level with each other. So we want that one just there. Just straight across and drop the other one right next to it. just there so there we go we have our two placeable silos here that's given us 420,000 litres of storage down here that is almost enough for a canola harvest or a sunflower harvest so potentially we could even do with a third one down here as well um, but they'll do for now that gives us some good storage down here uh, so now we need to get our big bud over here so we can actually get away uh, and get our ploughing underway down here Okay, so Big Bud is now down here where it needs to be. However, you can see the fuel tank is a little bit low. And uh, this is obviously a very thirsty piece of equipment. So we're going to give him a quick uh, a quick drink, top that tank back up before we get him underway with the ploughing job. And then uh, we might even extend the, uh, the field ever so slightly at either end as well once the uh, main bulk of the ploughing has been done. We'll see how that goes. go several minutes and a few thousand dollars later we have a full fuel tank so let's hook up to our plow 
get into position on the field and uh, set Big Bud off to do some field work for us. Yeah, it's a real shame, I think, that given how much detail and effort that they put into the Big Bud model, that Giants didn't actually give us a working camera and monitor screen. That would have been a, an amazing feature. But, uh, yeah, who knows? Maybe... Maybe with the next version of Farming Sim, we might get something like that. We can only dream, eh? So, let's unfold our plough. Actually facing the wrong way. So we're going to need to turn it as well. There we go. We get lined up roughly with the edge of the field. Should do it. And uh, the other reason I brought the pickup truck over is because I'm going to change Big Bud to Jules again. So I uh, just need to quickly nip back over here to the pickup truck because I have a trusty toolbox in the back of it ready and waiting. So we'll drive this over to the field. Those silos do look impressive, just sat there, you know, paired up like that. There's our toolbox, as you can see. So, just drop the tailgate down so I can get to that nice and easy. Carry this over. That should do. Oh, no, on the trail lifter. Let's move it here. There we go, and we'll put twin wheels on. There we go, so we will need to reconnect the plow. That obviously detaches because we've uh, customized Big Bud itself. We'll just throw that into the, where's that gone? Where did our toolbox land? <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> Bounced out of my grip and went absolutely flying. There we go. So. Engine on, plow reconnected, and away we go. Hopefully we're far enough across. It looks like we are. And there we go, our 747 is off and plowing. So the next job is to get our combine up and running. So let's uh, unfold. Let's not drop the header. Let's unfold. There we go. Turn the engine on. Turn on the combine. And off we go with our Helianthus header. We have some flowers on field three that we need to get rid of. And then when these are done, we'll have uh, a crop of corn on field five to do as well. So we'll need to change headers. And then... Uh, take the combine down and do that field there. In fact, what I can do is I can try and be a little bit clever. Uh, we, we hinted at possibly doing this last time out. Let's find the other combine. There it is. Uh, we've got our corn header back there. Let's send this combine down to do uh, the other field. It may be a bit tricky trying to balance this with just the one truck, even if we have two trailers. But we'll uh, we'll get this combine down in position on field uh, field five, and uh, and then we'll look at seeing if we can actually get that going and move the uh, the trailer to the bottom of field three, and then just shuttle our auger wagon between the two combines as best we can.
So this is definitely going to keep me on my toes, having to uh, switch between unloading one combine, then tipping, then going up to the other combine, unloading, coming back, tipping, getting back to this combine. Especially as they're running at different speeds as well. This one's running at 9 miles an hour, thanks to the Helianthus header. The other one is only running at 6, because it's using a standard corn header. So uh, that's going to be an interesting challenge. and see if I can keep them both operational at all times. Uh, get the pipe ready to unload. So we're going to have to make one of these trailers for sunflower, one of them for corn, and we are going to have to empty the truck partway through the harvest as well, because obviously the uh, you know the sunflower yield is going to be uh, a lot higher than the corn yield because it's a much bigger field. So there we go. Let's uh, go tag the corn combine. Of course, we're only moving at 19 miles an hour as well in the Big Bud, so uh, that in itself is going to present challenges in making sure that we can actually get back quickly enough. So our other combine has already started on this field here, somewhere hidden behind those trees. I wonder if he's made it to the end yet. Oh, he's already got a nearly full grain tank, and he's just made it to the end. Oh, wow, this is, this is definitely going to be a real challenge trying to keep these two up and running at the same time. I think I may be taking on a little bit more than I can handle here on my own. <laughs> I've bitten off a little bit more than I can chew. Let's uh, let's see how we do. Where is that combine? He's near the end of the field. I can just see him through the tree there, I think. Can I get to him before he fills up? He's just lowering his header to start his second pass. So yeah, this is definitely going to be uh, a real close run thing. Let's swing around to meet him. Come on, start piping out. And then I've got to unload this and then get all the way back up to the top or at least part way up the field on field five to make sure that uh, we get to that combine before he needs an empty as well. Yeah, this is going to be a challenge. This is going to be a real challenge. So we'll stick with this for a moment, just see how we get on. And uh, while we're doing this, uh, if you didn't see Fent Friday, uh, you know, Fent Farm on Friday, then uh, obviously you missed the big announcement about the future of farm sim content on the channel. Uh, don't worry if you didn't see the announcement. It's not a bad one. We're not dropping Farm Sim. Farm Sim is going to stay on the channel for a very, very long time. Plus, you know, obviously, we're going to be looking at some of the other farming games when they come out as well, see if they're any good. Uh, but we are looking at uh, making some changes going forward. So Big Bud is obviously today coming out on a Sunday. This is the new day for Big Bud. We're going once a week with this farm now. Uh, so every Sunday will be Big Bud Sunday. Uh, on Tuesdays, we'll be putting American Outback on Tuesday. And then Thursdays will be the relaunched Massey Manor on uh, the West Coast map. And Fridays will be Fent Farm, which will also be on the relaunched West Coast map on the very same save file as Massey Manor. We're going to try and run two farms at the same time on the same save file so that uh, we can split the map up into uh, more manageable chunks so you get to see more of the map as we're playing and also you know you get to see different areas of the map in use in uh, you know in regularity rather than sort of just focusing on one small area of the map and gradually uh, over a period of weeks and months starting to expand into other areas of the map we'll have two separate areas being worked on right from the very go uh, so you'll see a lot more of the map a lot more frequently. Plus, you'll hopefully see some interaction between the two different farms as we trade uh, grain and equipment, etc. between them. You know, uh, one farm might come over with a piece of specialised equipment to help out on the other one and, uh, and make a payment in grain of some kind or you know, something, or maybe some manure or slurry, something like that. We'll, we'll see how that works out. 
but there is going to be a lot of interaction between the two farms. Massey Manor is obviously going to be rebooting with old school Massey stuff to start with and then will work its way up to the more modern Massey equipment. Uh, Fent Farm will be starting with uh, some of the brand new Fent 800 favourites and uh, a selection of Fent equipment uh, and we'll obviously get some big Fent stuff in there as well. Uh, the rest of the brands I haven't kind of figured out what we're going to do with those just yet. Uh, so we'll, that'll all kind of shake out a little bit later along the line but uh, we are as I say going to run two separate independent farms at the same time on the same fight save file and I don't think on console at least that's ever been done as a let's play so I think that may be a first something I've been planning for about a month or so so just great great uh, you know pleased that I'm able to finally make that announcement to you guys now that we are literally hopefully just a few days away from the west coast going live Right, so our other combine is now on his way down the field. Let's rush back over to that and <laughs> see if we can pick up that combine before he fills up. This is going to be uh, tricky. You can see the uh, indentation there, which hasn't drawn in the combine yet. There's the combine. Oh, no, he's just stopped. Full grain tank. So uh, we are going to get a little bit of stoppage, but we are going to be able to kind of shuffle between the two by the look of it. So uh, I'm going to keep doing this and uh, we'll skip forward in time a little bit and see how things shake out. So once again, we couldn't quite make it back. You know, as we were starting to close in on the combine, it filled up and stopped. So uh, we are getting slight stoppages but uh, nothing too drastic. It's only stopping for maybe 20 seconds or so while it takes you know, as a, a moment just to catch up to it and then get it back underway again by driving through, taking a, a couple of thousand out, getting it back underway and then uh, pulling along the side like this. And it'll be the same with the other combine. As you can see, he's already halfway along his field there. So by the time we get to the bottom of this field and unload, he'll have turned and probably... Uh, made a start going down and by the time I get to him he'll have pulled up and be full as well so we're getting a little bit of a, 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 a lull in the harvest but nothing too serious actually and this is actually working out really really well in, in the sense that I'm able to harvest both of these two fields at the same time with minimal kind of breaks but it's definitely a lot quicker than doing one field on its own and then kind of just sitting waiting for the combine to come back at, uh, to, to empty it again it's keeping me a lot more active as well so uh, you can see on the side map there, Big Bud is uh, on field one, about halfway down the field now nearly, still ploughing away. He's still got an awful lot of that field to do, so he's going to be ploughing for the rest of the evening. <laughs> if not just on that field, then certainly when it comes to doing fields three and five as well. Uh, so seeding is going to have to wait till the next episode, I think. But we must make sure that we plant barley or wheat. I'm probably going to go with barley this time round on field five so that we can get some straw uh, for our cows so that we can make some TMR and also put some straw bedding down. And you see at the bottom there, uh, worker E almost at the end of field five. So by the time we get unloaded, he'll have uh, reached the end and turned around. I haven't got a lot of uh, space left in parts of these trailers you can see already you yeah, know we're getting really full up there's the 80 percent warning so it means he's reached the end of the field <laughs> yeah uh, he's gonna pull up and uh, and stop by the time we get to him there we go so let's head over there and try and unload him not long to go on this actually already you can see that we've done most of field five already so we haven't got a huge amount left. In fact, we've done a couple of unloads. This will maybe fill the entire trailer up. This load here. We'll have to see exactly how much we have left. And while we're chasing down the combine, which is inevitably going to stop just as we start to get close to it, uh, let's talk about what else happened on Friday. Uh, we saw the return of Fact Sheet Friday. Yes, it's that time of year again. We have new DLC on the way, and oh, look, the AI has kicked in. 
and he's uh, decided not to play ball with the field. <laughs> That's the last thing we needed, was the AI going a bit loopy. That's really going to throw a, a spanner in the works here. But yeah, we saw the return of Fact Sheet Friday uh, with the first two Fact Sheets from the Platinum DLC expansion uh, for the uh, Massey Ferguson MF4709 and the Stara Imperador 3.0. So uh, we'll run through the stats for those in just a moment. But let's first get this combine sort of turned around and see if we can get him up and running properly again. We might have to manually harvest a little section here. Yeah, he's not going to do it, look. So we're going to have to manually run him a little way. And keep trying to get him kick-started. You see, again, he's stopping. All right, so let's get him empty. It just means our uh, sunflower harvest is going to have to, you know, sit tight for a moment. But while that's unloading... Let's go through the stats of the uh, the Massey Ferguson MF4709. So, uh, this is a uh, cabless tractor costing $78,000 uh, with a daily maintenance of $100,000. Sorry, $100. $100,000, that would be insane. Uh, maximum power is uh, 70 kilowatts and 95 brake horsepower. Uh, the, well, that's the minimum power. The maximum power isn't listed, so I'm guessing it's just one size tractor. Uh, fuel tank capacity is 105 litres, a top speed of 40 kilometres or 25 miles an hour. Uh, has the ability to load a front loader uh, and can also have standard or wide tyres fitted. So uh, quite a small little tractor. Certainly the smallest in the Massey Ferguson range uh, that we currently have available, at least of the modern stuff, you know, not counting the stuff that Black Sheep have done. But, uh, yeah, this uh, does have a sunshade. I don't know whether that's going to be removable or not. We'll have to wait and see until uh, nearer the time, I think, see if any footage of it appears without the cab having that sunshade over it. And it does have a front weight fitted to, the, uh, uh, to it as well. So unsure as to whether or not that means uh, that is going to be removable or not. I get the feeling probably not. So there'll be no front attacher, just the front weight uh, fitted on it. Uh, the other uh, picture is obviously the uh, Stara Imperador 3000, which is a sprayer. Stara is obviously a Brazilian manufacturer of equipment, uh, and this sprayer does actually look really nice. Oh, going a little bit too fast on the cruise control there. We'll set up for the uh, Helianthus. There we go. So, let's have a look at the, stat the, uh, the Imperador stats. Uh, this is uh, a sprayer costing $195,000 with a $550 maintenance fee. Has uh, a power of 162 kilowatts and 220 horsepower. And the AI is playing up on us again, look. Ugh, I hate this field, the way it keeps doing this to us. It's horrible. Uh, so yeah, uh, 220 horsepower, 340 litre fuel tank. Uh, contains liquid and solid fertilizer that's quite interesting yeah the fact that it can actually spray out both types of fertilizer uh, that'll be the first one of the sprayers that we have that will be able to do that so that's a really interesting little feature for this particular model here uh, 2700 litre capacity on the fuel tank 2400 litre tank capacity for fertilizer itself uh, top speed of 40 kilometers an hour or 25 miles per hour, depending on which format you prefer. Uh, has an operating speed of 12 kilometers per hour, which is 7 miles per hour. Uh, a working width of 27 meters and can be fitted with either standard or narrow tires. So there we go. That is the two fact sheets that we received on Friday. Obviously, we're going to get another pair next Friday. Uh, so make sure you uh, pay attention to either myself or Giants as uh, as soon as Giants release those images obviously they'll put them up on their Facebook page and on, probably on Twitter as well I will immediately post those pictures as soon as I get my uh, get them onto my Facebook page as well and if I spot anything interesting I'll obviously make a note of that in the comments as well well wouldn't you know it we didn't quite have enough space in the trailer to empty out that last little bit that I insisted on making sure I got in the back of the auger. 
So now we may as well just finish off this field. The AI was just problematic all the way down there. Even as we got towards the end, it kept cancelling on me. So uh, we may as well finish this field off and then we'll resume our sunflower harvest. So an interesting experiment. It's kind of worked in some respects in that we've got this field done while we were doing field three, but has proved problematic and uh, needs to be a little bit more thought out if we're going to make this a regular, you know, style of operation we're going to need a separate auger down here and probably a separate trailer as well just so that they can run independently and look there's the ai screwing itself up again i don't understand what it is with this field it's just so annoying sometimes certain equipment like a weeder for example seems to run along here absolutely fine no problems at all we try and do this thing and it just goes bananas <laughs> it just refuses to work and I don't know why. I don't know why some equipment seems to work, some working wits seem to be okay, and then other working wits just immediately send it completely do lally. But uh, yeah, we'll get this uh, we'll get this harvest completed here, and then uh, we'll unload into that. We'll take that up to the silo. We'll dump it. We'll dump the truck, and then we'll move the truck back up to the top of the f uh, field three, and we'll continue our sunflower unload. So we've emptied the last of the grain out of our auger. Uh, we've still got the truck to deal with, but uh, we need to get this combine up and running again. So uh, let's tag him here. Just back up a bit so he's got enough space to get started. Pull back alongside and continue to empty. There we go. So uh, we've actually made a decent haul. Uh, we had just over 7,000 or so in the auger. Uh, so with 70,000 in the truck, 70, what, 77,000 litres of corn off that field? That's not too bad. That's not too shabby. You know, uh, a trailer's worth plus a little bit of extra. Uh, the trailer we can hopefully sell for a decent price in the not too distant future. You know, make back some of the money that we've just invested uh, all the way down there with our uh, silos and our mill actually might be worth selling something at the mill later this episode well we're pr kind of pushed for time so we'll probably do a little bit of test selling uh in the next episode before we start doing our seeding but uh let's whiz ahead let's unload this into the truck if actually no let's just bring this back up to the top and we'll take the truck all the way up tip the truck and then uh Park it up at the top of the field and continue this harvest you know, without any further interruptions. Let's just check in on Big Bud, see how he's doing. Uh, slowly plodding along, as you can see, at 9 miles an hour, pulling that massive 10.5-metre uh, plough there. Just chewing up huge, great big swaths of ground. But still a long way to go till this field is done at the very least so uh, we'll leave them to it and we'll carry on with our harvest and thus concludes another harvest here on Big Bug Farm so we've got what 37,000 litres in the back of our chaser here there's already 30 something I think 34,000 in the truck so we're looking at maybe just over a full trailer's worth to add to the 40-something thousand that we've already dumped into our silo. So uh, quite a nice little haul of sunflowers there, 110,000 or so, 115, something around that kind of figure. And obviously we had our 77,000 litres of corn as well. So it's been quite a nice little, uh, little stockpile there that we've got, starting to build up on those two grains. As I say, hopefully we'll get a decent price Let's see what they're like at the moment. Uh, both pretty terrible. So they see... Uh, oh, we actually got 59,000 litres. Oh, we had some so far left over, didn't we? No, I had some in the auger. No, no, we must have had some left over in the silo because I tipped about 43,000 in there. Uh, so 77,500 litres in corn uh, to go with our uh, 57,000 litres of soybean that we have left over, our 433,000... 434,000 litres of canola and now another 70 72,000 litres of uh, sunflowers about to be tipped in there as well so we're getting quite a nice little stockpile of grain again 
Obviously, we're going to need to start selling some stuff off pretty soon. Uh, you'll notice that the money is slightly back in the positive again. That's because I took another 10,000, 15,000 out to uh, buy the, uh, the small plough. I've already made a small cut just to kind of plot out the uh, sort of the length of extension that I'm going to put on one end of the field and then I'll do the same at the other end. I'll get those sort of uh, cut and done. Uh, I'm also going to extend the width of the field ever so slightly. Uh, just put a little extra pass in there just to make those fields a little bit wider. And then obviously I'll do a little bit of tweaking on field five as well. So uh, quite a lot of plough work that's going to take place off camera before you guys come back for the next episode. Uh, don't forget as well, uh, the, as well as the new timetable for our farming sim content, we have uh, City Skylines uh, running regularly on the channel. Uh, Monday to Friday we'll be doing episodes of Jimsville, and then I'll look to do something a little bit different with City Skylines over the weekends. Uh, and then we also have Prison Architect Season 2 that's running. That's going to run three times a week on... Uh, uh, Let's see which days have I got planned. Uh, Mondays, Wednesdays and Saturdays for Prison Architect. And uh, we're also going to have some everybody's golf footage pop up occasionally, probably on a Sunday. So uh, keep your eyes peeled for that as well. So uh, let's just have another look at our totals now. There we go, 131,000 litres of sunflowers in stock. So when that price gets really nice and high, we'll make a nice tidy sum from that. Well, that's all from me. Thanks for watching. I am Jim Bob, and I will catch you back on Big Bud Farm very soon.